Mike, I'm, you're, we're here at the Fun Show, and you brought this great vintage spider press, which the Bureau of Engraving and Printing had used for many years to strike currency notes and other engravings. Uh, did you, when you were working at the Bureau, were they still using this equipment? Uh, not for currency, but for uh, proving and you know new designs and things. Plus, uh, we took the spider press out for demonstrations. You know, coin shows and everything for the public to see. So, what's the principle at play? What makes this type of press different than you know what people assume would be used for a book? Or well, this is a 19th century Italios plate press or spider press with do the long spokes. And what it is, it has to exert pressure on your engraved plate to pick up your image, right. which takes a lot of pressure. And to help us do all that, we, there's a method called wet printing, which we use, which is no longer used anymore. It softens the fibers of the paper to make it a little easier. But this press will actually give you 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch on the plate so we can get our, to force the paper down into the engraved lines. So how does uh, that, the, how does this printing uh, or, uh, create the, uh, raised element of this very intricate artwork like how is that done well the whole thing is is the actual your engraved plate you're using right this is all our particular plate we're using is from the uh, security Colombian banknote company which is no longer in existence so it came out of the American banknote company archives but it's a uh, hand engraved and the beauty of all hand, hand engraving is because you have a banknote picture engraver, right. which hand cuts all those intricate details in there. Right. And they've learned how to do that after a 10 year apprenticeship to be a banknote picture engraver. Plus they have to be a gifted artist even before they even start. But then once you have your hand engraved image or one master die and from them, then they actually harden that and go from there with your printing plates. Right, so when you're creating this plate here, uh, the artist is hand cutting this very intricate the design. Engraver, the bank engraving. of picture engraver is actually hand cutting the steel with a low engraver, which we have samples over there. But basically with what I'm doing, I got the easy part. I'm just transferring ink from this beautiful engraving onto the paper. So when this this plate that you're using right now, you know, it features very elaborate artwork that was cut into it by an engraver. Uh, was any of this process done mechanically, like with the help of a machine, or is this all an artist's, uh, you know, individual handwork? Well, most of the vignette pieces are are, are actually hand engraved. They have a geometric lathe machine, which will help you with the geometric design borders and things and they have pantograph machines for, to assist in letters or straight lines but most of the beauty of engraving is the banknote picture engraver with his with his skill to, right. to, to make it look like a three-dimensional photograph basically but it has depth and so then uh, I see this ink that you have here on your table is this a special kind of ink that's used just to create oh, the yeah. elevation. And this is banknote uh, proving ink, and it's about 60% of its filler, which is chalk, calcium carbonate, and uh, varieties. Makes it real thick and pasty, and then you have your vehicle and your pigment, and that's it's it's old, old style, but it's real thick and pasty because you got to get it down in your engraved lines and stay in there, and then you have to remove all the surface ink which is just a matter of touch. Well, well let's watch you uh, uh, prep one of these plates and, okay. and, and print something on this great machine. So we have our, and the only non-19th century piece of equipment I'm using here is a cut up credit card because it makes a nice uh, scraper. You could use a roller, or a, but we like to just paste the ink right in here like a modern currency press will do the same thing in less than a less than a second but they're using a big roller right they roll the ink in and then they wipe it off see we just rolled all the ink in here 
right? Now we have to remove the service sink, which is that kind of the touchy part, or if you use it, you can actually take too much ink out of your engraved lines. So does this process have to be repeated for every print? Every, every print, I have to redo it. We take uh, more than, let's say, more than 50% of the ink out when we print. So if we did a second print trying to save time, it'd be too weak. So, so when we, we were talking about uh, banknote printing, so they, they would have to follow this process for each? This is the basic principles of banknote printing. Wow. You, you have your engraved plate, you ink it in, you wipe off the surface, and then you print it. And that's basically it. So it was a long day at the office for those guys well, that did this If you're this doing by it hand. by hand. <laughs> so once you remove most of your surface ink here, then you take, we actually, this is called crinoline, and it's the old, what they use in old hoop skirts. Right. It's a rough weave fabric. Because if you use your, uh, like, t-shirt, it'd be too soft and take too much ink in. So you lightly go over the surface. It's just a matter of, well, not, you don't want to use too much pressure. You take the ink out of the engraved lines. So you get to this point, and it's, it's got actually a you film start. on there. It has to be, now we're going to hand polish that off. That's a little chalk on my hand, which keeps my hand dry, and I'm going to polish this plate. This is called hand polishing the plate. Unfortunately, on this one, we're using blue ink, which has a lot of pigment in there. Right. And it's a little hard to wipe off. Not hard, but if I wipe too hard, then we're not going to have anything left in the image. So that looks fairly clean, but... So it, seem, it seems to me, based on this old style, that it probably took longer to create a piece of paper money than it did to strike a coin. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, but back in the day, like when they were printing all currency, you know, four notes at a time. They would, uh, they actually got paid piece rate and they got charged for their spoilage, so they had to be fast and good. And they all had a helper with them, usually a female, that laid the sheet out and took it off once you printed it so they could really, speed it up man, a bit. you know, really go pretty fast. I, I'd be a, a real dinosaur compared <laughs> to what they used to, used to do. <laughs> So then I take actually a little uh, uh, alcohol, denatured alcohol, and a little chalk, chalk I go get from the pool hall, but and I'm trying to take all this blue tone off the plate so it won't print. Because everything you leave on the surface is gonna show up on your print. And then you got a plate mark since our paper is bigger than I mean, our plate's small. Well, our plate's smaller than the paper, and the paper bigger than the plate. And this plate mark's going to show up. It has some rough edges and things you don't want to see. But if it holds ink, it's going to print that way. So I'm so taking did, a so little did, extra time cleaning. So did these plates ever crack or get, you know, wear out during? Yeah, usage? if they start getting warped and. And they're actually, most of them are heat treated to, you know, it uh, hardens the surface, but they can get brittle and crack. Mm -hmm. Or if, you know, you could possibly, if it's not flat in there, it could break it. I haven't really cracked too many plates. If they do get, sometimes they get warped, you just gotta run them. If they're warped that way, you run them through the press. Uh -huh. If you try it the other way, it's, it will crack them. But you can actually straighten out a plate, but we won't get into that. Okay. See, while I'm doing this, I'm really looking to see. I can see this plate. I mean, it's fairly old, and it's not really a. Should have a nice, smooth mirror mirror finish, and it's somewhat rough. And, but we're gonna make it look good. As long as I didn't see, I'm going with my finger around the outside. I'm going to blend all this in. And every and every pressing, it requires this process being repeated. This meticulous, multi-step process. Well, 
Well, they should. Okay. See, right now, I can still see the, a little plate tone, but that should be all right. Normally, after all this alcohol and chalk, I'll actually try to blend it in, but... So how long does it take for this ink to dry once it's pressed? Well, I'll put it between uh, craft paper and dry cardboard for about three hours, three or four hours, it'll oxidize. Then I'll between it, put it in dry cardboard overnight, and it, that way the wet, we're actually gonna use damp paper, so it'll actually dry flat, and the ink should be pretty well oxidized, where it wouldn't rub off. Okay, now I just set it here on our press. I actually have a same size sheets for a registration. Then I put my plate there and I'm gonna get the paper and put it so I have a good even print on there. And our spider press, this top roller is the impression roller. Right. That's what forces the paper into the engraved lines. So now we're really we're ready to go. Alright, cool. Let me get a show you this. This is our dampened paper, which I have in plastic so it doesn't dry out. And since I don't have a helper with clean hands, I take one of my business cards and make a little clip so I can grab this without getting this too dirty. That's that's why the old guy, I mean the original printers, printers had, had somebody with clean hands so they could go faster, but I, I had to go for quality, not quantity. So when you said damp paper, is this a is this a process that you have to... Oh yeah, yeah. I wet this down ahead of time. What it does, it softens the fibers of the paper because we're gonna force them into the engraved lines to get the ink in. Right. So if I have a dry, hard sheet, I'll probably lose some of the detail and I'll, and I'll have to use more pressure. And then I could possibly, wouldn't be able to even pull the uh, plate through the press. Hmm. So we're ready to go here. Of course, this this is all engraved too, the lettering, but it was done ahead of time. That's actually a water-based ink. Even though I wet the paper down, it didn't affect it at all because the water base is impervious to water now. So if that makes any sense. So let me uh, slide this under. Of course, you're not gonna be able to, we're printing face down. So oh, you yeah. really won't see much till we bring them back. Okay. And I've had, I actually have the, I can tell kind of by the feel of the uh, pressure. I mean, but I have it already the correct pressure. <clears throat> see, now it hits a plate. Once I pull it through, that's when we get a 2,000 pounds of pressure per square inch on that plate. So we'll pull it through. Actually, it's easy when you have the leverage. We bring it back here, and here's where we'll see what we got. Wow. There's wow. our print the plate mark. See, there's a rough, the edges isn't smooth, so it's hard to clean that up. So when you actually see an engraving and you see that sort of that hue over it, that's from the ink not being removed from the plate? Yeah, that's because this blue ink has a lot of pigment. Uh -huh. I use the blue ink mainly because of the patriotic theme, red, white, and blue. But right, right. Blue is, is the worst pigment you could probably use. And then with the plate not having a real smooth mirror finish, it wants to stay there. But normally banknotes, it's clean around except, you know, your image. That's but it looks like everything's there printing pretty well. That's really beautiful. And then if you hold it up, you can, well, a certain way you can see the, where the press, that's, the sheet is countered to down where the right. pressure, it's shiny. Right. And everything else. But now we'll take that go over to our, and put it in our dry cards of work. And they can sit in there as long as they oxidize and dry, and you don't touch them, they're fine. If you go in there, it'll smear right away. But those will be clean just the way it is. Very, very cool. And if I want to do another one, see, you have a little ink left. Imagine that you could, you yeah. could get some off there, but it, no use printing another one. I'd have to re-ink it in, do that same process all over again. 
That's very cool. So how many of these are you going to print at the show? Or are you well, already I, done? I, well, now it's mainly I have the ones I need that are dry. Yeah. That you have to dry overnight, but there's only a hundred that are signed, number been dated, and that's it. And they're for our free raffle. Cool. Well, Michael, thanks for showing me this cool technology. Yeah, I don't really want to shake my hand, but <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> All right, cool, Vink. Thank you very much. Okay.